Okay, hello. Uh, my name is uh, Guillaume Cedric Marty. Uh, I'm French, but I'm living in the UK, so uh, hopefully my bad accent won't cause you any head headaches. So today, I'm going to speak about uh, fast uh, retro gaming and video game emulation on mobile. So just a quick poll. How many of you were born in the 90s? Hand up. Okay. In the 80s? Okay. And the 70s? Okay, good. So for most of these guys, uh, probably get some, get some, uh, bring back some uh, good memories for from your childhood. Okay, so let's start. Um, so if you, this is actually the intro from uh, a Meg Mega Man game on on NES. So I just thought it would be a nice introduction to my talk. So um, there you go. So the, the title of the talk is 60 FPS Retro Gaming on Mobile. So, as you know, uh, at, um, the current state of JavaScript at the moment, JavaScript is fast enough for uh, doing uh, emulation. Uh, and it's also good because it's cross-platform, so you don't have to, uh, to build different binaries for de de depending on the platform you want to, sh to, to ship your emulator. And uh, also, it's the only way to have video game emulation on uh, web-based OSs. Think of uh, Firefox OS, for example. And also, it's the only legal, legal way to get emulation on, on iOS, unless, of course, you, you, have, uh, you jailbreak your, your iPhone. So, um, today, on this talk, I'm going to go through different techniques for uh, emulation, so the first one is, the, is called interpreter, and the second one is called recompiler. And I'm going to explain you the techniques used and uh, which one to go, uh, especially uh, if you want to build fast emulation on, on uh, mobile. Okay, so um, the first thing you have to do when you want to do emulation is to get uh, a ROM file, a ROM image file. So basically, uh, emulation uses, so, so a ROM file is actually a binary file representing a, uh, a cartridge of a, of, a of a video game. So it's a binary file, so it's just uh, uh, a certain amount of, of data. Uh, so have a look at this. So this is a kind of JavaScript representation of a ROM file. So um, this is the beginning of the uh, Game Gear version of a, um, the Game Gear version of the Japanese version of Columns. So um, what's on the screen is actually a copyrighted material, but I believe it's legal for me to show you because I own the original video game. So. Um, so what, this is what we get if we, when we want to, uh, to do emulation. We just get a large binary file. So what we have to do is to place this big binary file into a, a JavaScript buffer. And then we, um, we feed this buffer into a data view, and we place this data view into a variable called ROM. So that will be uh, that will allow us to um, to require to get some data actually from from this uh, ROM file. Um, so the first thing we need is a variable that we most of the time it's called PC. That stands for for. for uh, program counter. So basically, this variable uh, is a, a pointer to the current instruction being uh, executed in a in a, di in a in a ROM file. So in this example, I'm going to take so this, the, as an example, I'm going to use uh, the explain the emulation on uh, Master System and, and Game Gear. Both of these consoles bear very similar hardware, so emulation is very is very, it's kind of the same, we can emulate both systems very easily. So on this system, the entry point in the ROM file is uh, the data located at index zero. So uh, at the beginning of the program, we define a PC variable to zero. Then we read uh, what we call knob code, uh, which I believe stands for Operation, operation code. I, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, by the way, if you're familiar with very low level, I mean, um, CPU level programming and assembler, this is going to be very, very easy for you to, to get it. So uh, let's get back to, to this. So the opcode is basically uh, the uh, unsigned 8 bit inte integer uh, located at the position of PC. So, what we do is we, uh, using the uh, data view uh, get uint 8, um, so f um, passing uh, the position of PC as an argument, we place this value into the opcode. And uh, if you remember from the previous slide, when I show you the, the, the beginning of a binary file, the first uh, value was C3. So when we do emulation, it's very common to use hexadecimal notation. So because um, I don't really know why, but because it's, it's makes it easier. So the first value is uh, hexadecimal value C3. So this hexadecimal value C3 gives us the um, Gives us uh, actually tells us what should what should the CPU do. So in this case, uh, the instruction for this particular CPU is GP. GP stands for uh, jump. So when you do a jump, we basically uh, transfer the execution of the program to somewhere else in the ROM file. So to decode the opcode, we just place it into a big switch, and for the so our first case is C3, and as I told you, a jump transfer the execution of the program to somewhere else in the room. So what we need to do is actually update the value of PC. And to know what we call a jump target, to know what will be the new value of PC, we just have to read the unsigned, uh, unsigned 16-bit integer uh, at the current position of PC. So if you notice on the... Uh, second line, I've incremented the position of PC. So, um, so um, now, if you rewind and go back to the first slide, you will see that the second and third value is 007E, the exact decimal value 007E. So we update the value of PC. So now PC is 007E, and what we do from now is we uh, we start. Again, so we put everything in a in a in a loop, and then so on the second time on the loop, uh, we will read the uh, value for the opcode at 007E, and then we'll have to implement the uh, matching instruction in the switch. So that's it. We just interpreted the ROM. Congratulations. So this approach is uh, actually. Uh, the most basic way to implement an emulator in JavaScript or in any other language. Um, so it's very easy, well, I mean, of course, in this case, it's just a very simple, I remove a lot of details, but it's relatively easy to, to develop an interpreter. However, it's, it's a bit slow, especially on mobile. So it can be OK on, uh, on desktop, but on mobile it's definitely too slow. So uh, we need to find another approach. So the idea of this of our approach is, so let's say we have a particular ROM, a ROM file. So we know the idea would be to compile this ROM file into a JavaScript, into pure JavaScript function. So if we're taking this example, we would have an object called instruction with several uh, properties. The first one would be uh, uh, zero, 00. And we know whenever the PC is as value zero, 00, we know that what we want to do is update its value to 007E. Okay? And then uh, the uh, property 007E. Um, then in this, in, so in this case, we need to implement the uh, behavior to, um, to mimic the, um, uh, the instruction that we want to do. So then what we need to do is just to wrap everything in a while loop, and then there we go. So this is, whoops, this is what we call a recompilation. So most of the time, so there are many different ways to, uh, to build the recompiler, but on the one I'm going to uh, 
to talk about there are uh, four main, main components. So the first one is a parser, then there is an analyzer, an optimizer, and at the end, a generator. Okay, so, so let's go through all of these components. So the first parser. As you've seen at the beginning of the talk, what we get is, is just a huge binary file where everything is mixed uh, together. So we can't really, just by looking at the file, we can't really tell the instruction apart from the operands, from the, the data used for the, the sprites or the background and all the behavior used for the, uh, uh, the bosses uh, IA, for example. So that's why we need a parser to, tr to try to make it clear what's, what is instruction and what is uh, all the other type of data, okay? So then, what we get from this uh, parser is sent to the analyzer. So this part is actually fundamental in, a, in an emulation because what it does, it kind of recreates uh, a natural JavaScript or a natural look code uh, from a binary file. So it must recreate uh, the control flow using a JavaScript instruction like if, uh, if for, uh, while, etc. And, um, and, and, and that's it. Uh, so then we have the optimizer. So the optimizer is, as the name implies, make sure the code runs as fast as possible. And then, uh, yes, however, this step is purely optional and we can just remove it and the uh, compiler is going to run um, normally, I'm, I'd say. And then, of course, at the end, what we need is, is a JavaScript code and this is the role of a generator, okay? So now I'm going to show you the flow of data because at the beginning, what we start with is uh, binary data for taken directly from the ROM file. So this is the input that is uh, sent to the parser. Then the parser uh, outputs an array of bytecode. So a bytecode is just a structured, structured, um, uh, structured element that tells for that that show for each um, each instruction what, what what is the opcode, what is the operand, etc. But we can't do much with just bytecodes. So then we have the analyzer. So the, by the bytecode go through the analyzer, and then we get as an output uh, an, IS an AST. Um, so in this particular exam example, uh, I'm using an AST. Um, so that's what we called an I uh, IR, which stands for uh, intermediate representation. And I've decided to use a JavaScript AST. However, it's, it's, it's a simplified IST with um, um, not with, because what we need to do is apply many, um, many, we, we need to process the this, da this information in, in many different ways. So if the easier AST we get, the easier it is to, to do all this processing. Uh, however, uh, it has, um, if I had to rewrite it now, I would probably wouldn't go for an IST because it's very complicated. My idea was, I was maybe a bit naive, but I was thinking, okay, if I, if I have a JavaScript AST, then I'm probably going to be able to reuse uh, optimization passes um, uh, developed for other uh, projects. I'm thinking in particular to, uh, what's it called, is it uh, ES Mangle, which is um, a JavaScript uh, minifier, but that does also some optimization. So I was thinking just to reuse this, this optimization passes to make my code uh, faster, but it turned out it wasn't such a great idea. Okay, anyway. And, and at the end, of course, this AST goes through the generator and we get a JavaScript code that is ready to be, um, to be run and, uh, and played. Okay, there are two different types of recompilation. Uh, there is the static and dynamic recompilation. So the static recompilation, uh, as uh, the name implies, uses uh, static ana analysis. So 
basically it's done before the game plays, before the game starts. And on the other hand, we have a dynamic recompilation. So this uh, type of recompilation is actually working at runtime when the game is playing. It's recompilating on the fly. OK, now we're going to uh, go on a kind of case study. I'm going to um, talk to you about GS, JS SMS, which is an emulator I've, I built using all these techniques. So first of all, uh, when, a lo um, when a ROM is, is loaded into the emulator, we start with a, a static recompilation. So what it does, it tries to generate as much code as possible to, um, I mean, to turn uh, most of the binary data into JavaScript. And so this is what's represented by this runtime on this, on this graph. But how the, the problem we have is recompilation, as you, can, as you know, or well, as you probably know, induces latency. So it takes a while to, uh, to generate JavaScript code from, uh, from binary data. So that's why I, in this example, I decided to, um, to generate code uh, using static analysis before the game starts, because my, my guess was it's better to have uh, uh, the player to, to wait uh, before the game starts, because, uh, so, just to give you some figures, the recompilation uh, of a whole, whole ROM takes about, it depends on the ROM, but sometimes it's around from, let's say, 300 milliseconds to two, three seconds, so it's nothing. But it's better to have the player to wait before the game starts, because uh, if you can recompile as much JavaScript as possible, then we'll make sure we'll have uh, um, a game uh, that runs smooth, smooth, smoothly. Okay? So that's why there is a fa everything starts with a, a static recompilation. But we have an issue here, is that static uh, analysis has limitations. So, uh, just using static analysis on the ROM file, it's not possible to compile entirely a ROM file into JavaScript before, because uh, for, on some cases, under some circumstances, we can't know uh, just with static analysis what is going to be the next instruction uh, to, to, to execute. So, that's why uh, we can't do fully uh, statically, uh, we can do uh, full static recompilation, I mean, at least on this particular uh, video uh, console, okay? So then, um, we statically recompile the ROM and the game starts. So when the game starts, uh, whenever we find a new instruction that hasn't been generated uh, into JavaScript yet, what we do is we start the dynamic compilation. So everything, uh, all the process starts again. So we have the parser, the analyzer, optimizer, and generator. And then, after the generator, the JavaScript code that we get is appended to the pool of functions that we already have from the static uh, recompilation. And that means that whenever the game is played, when a function is played, we can't really know if, it's, if, if it has been recompiled using the static analysis or the dynamic uh, recompilation. Everything, everything belongs to the same uh, pool of, of, of functions. Okay? And, um, and also, unlike the static recompilation, when, you, when we do the, re, the dynamic recompilation, we only try to compile into JavaScript as few uh, code as possible. We want to compile just what's required. Because this idea is, because as I told you before, when you do rec recompilation, uh, we need text, recompilation process takes some time. So that's why we want, when the game's uh, is playing, we want to have as few lags as possible. So that's why we just, uh, we just recompile very few functions uh, when we do it at runtime. Uh, just before the benchmark, I just wanted to, to add that, of course, 
the more you play a game, the more likely you are to uh, um, the more likely the, the more the more instructions are being compiled into Java, JavaScript. So the more you play a game, the better, the faster, and the smoother it, it gets. Okay. Okay. So now uh, I guess it's benchmark time. So how much faster is interpretation as opposed to, as compared to recompilation? And this is what I get. Uh, so this benchmark was actually made on, uh, I think I used my um, Gigs Phone uh, Peak. So the figures from, one, from 0 to 40 is actually the FPS. So the recompilation is actually four to six times faster uh, than interpretation. And also, this benchmark is done on, on Firefox because I, I targeted Firefox right from the beginning. I haven't really optimized my code for Chrome, so that's why we, on Chrome we don't get such a, a big difference between both uh, types of emulation. And so, why, is, why do we have such a, a huge difference between both of the uh, emulation, both, both of the approaches for emulation. It's mainly because on the case of a recompilation, uh, the generated function can be easily optimized by, by the uh, JavaScript VM. Um, so um, if you remember during the interpret interpreter, the issue with an interpreter is we, so we have a, a pointer, so we increment the pointer, Read the value, execute the uh, value. Uh, um, sorry, execute the instruction associated to uh, the uh, the opcode, and then start again. Up, 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 um, increment the counter and continue this way. So that's why it makes it extremely diffi difficult for uh, VM to uh, to optimize such a code, and that's why compilation we get such a huge difference. Okay. Uh, from the benchmark um, I, I did, uh, it runs full speed on Nexus 4. It runs uh, for 40 FPS on, uh, on, the on the peak and around 30 FPS on a, on a Gigs Phone Keon. So it's not that bad. I mean, 30 FPS, it's a bit slow. It's not normal speed, but it's, the game is still, uh, still playable. So it's quite good. Um, okay, now I'm going to talk to you about Alec. So Alec is um, a Firefox app, so it means you can install it on Firefox OS, uh, Firefox for Android, and Firefox Desktop. Uh, so just as a side note, uh, Alec is a uh, is uh, I decided to, to call this, this web app Alec because uh, Alec is the, you know, remember the character Alex Kid? Yeah, I think you do. And um, the, the Japanese sometimes tend to, uh, to shorten this name Alex into Alec, so I decided to, to use it. Okay, so, so Alec is an open source uh, Firefox app that uses JSSMS as the engine to run, uh, to do emulation of uh, Sega Master System and Game Gear. Uh, it's still under development. Uh, there are some things to do, like there's some on the recompiler, some opcodes are missing. Uh, there's no sound, the control flow Restructuring can be uh, enhanced, can be yeah, can be better, and there are ways of ways of optimization that can be can be done. And also, uh, there's many things that we that we can experiment. Well, well, I have also already experimental experimented with different uh, solution to make it fast, but there are still loads and loads of uh, different things to do. So, for example, we could use Web Worker to generate a uh, JavaScript function, and uh, in the meantime, uh, use fall back to the interpreter and go back to the recompiler when the functions are ready to, uh, to be executed. Uh, we could also use uh, uh, generators 
to uh, mimic the interrupts and, uh, and use the web API, uh, use the game, GamePad API, where there's many, many things to do. And uh, so everything, everything is open source. So Alec and JSSMS, the engine, are open source. So uh, pull requests are welcome. So don't hesitate to, uh, to contribute. Uh, OK, that's about it. So um, if you want to uh, uh, contact me, there, this is my Twitter account. Uh, there is also my GitHub account. And the link if you want to uh, install Alec on your, on your device. Thank you. Oh, by the way, uh, the slide we are built using SAM, which stands for Simple Adventure, uh, Game, Adventure Game Maker, something like this. It's basically so. Actually, the slide you you uh, watch where uh, a real uh, Sega Master System ROM that I've compiled specially for for the occasion. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And, and, and that's it. So I just have a few minutes left. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to show you how good I am at playing columns. <laughs> Up. There we go. You. Can you talk? No? No. Normal. <laughs> I'm not taking any risks today. <laughs> oh, I have an issue. I can't see all my screen on my laptop anyway. Oops. Come on, you can encourage me. Yeah, please. Well, this device I'm using is not very fast, so um, so uh, I'm I'm not sure how much. Uh, how many FPS I'm playing at, but as you can see, it's still very playable and very still enjoyable. So, so that's it. I'm going to stop here before I, I lose. Thank you. So, uh, so we have no time for questions, but don't hesitate to uh, to grab me. To grab me, I'm a bit shy, but I can I can be sociable if I want. Thank you. <laughs>